Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Will and in this particular video what I want to do is to kick off a new series. This particular series is going to be a more in-depth course on various different different topics ranging from C Sharp, C++, video gaming, um, DirectX and that is video games development. What I plan to do with this is to go, as I said, a little bit more in-depth and uh, into the realms of what I usually do on my YouTube channel. Um, but I am going to also invest uh, in outputting some courses. In this particular case, we're going to be looking at the component object model. That's COM. Um, and uh, we're going to be diving into what COM is, what is the component object model, how it can help you as a developer, and um, how we can benefit from some of the advantages that it gives us. So without much further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to take you guys through to a slideshow that I created. And here we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth as to what the component object model is, understanding the fundamentals of COM. So without much further ado, let's get straight into this. So, as I said in the introduction, we're going to be looking at the component object model, that is COM, and we're going to be um, understanding, learning the fundamentals of COM. So I'm going to take you guys through to the slideshow that I created, and uh, I'm actually using uh, Office 365, which is quite neat, actually. It's like a cloud-based version. Um, it should be helping with the videos. And before you ask, I'm not sponsored, but um, uh, I just find it a very useful piece of software. Uh, I think they really have been improving it since it's... Um, um, quite recently, actually. So, in, in any case, let's get let's get straight into this. Let's not waste any more time. So, introduction. When we think of applications and programs, there is a vast amount of languages, libraries, platforms, and such that cater the landscape of software. But what if we needed these applications to communicate with with one of one another? Excuse me. So, what we do find is that um, across borders, you know. Um, C Sharp, C++, Java, Python, the list goes on. We have so many different paradigms and so many different programming languages. But what do we do if, say, we want, let's say, a C++ application or some kind of framework in C++ to work with, say, a code base written in C Sharp? A good example of this might be the SlimDX library or the SharpDX library. I can speak for the SlimDX library as a user, which... Um, I have used in some projects actually, uh, which is a DirectX based uh, wrapper. It um, encapsulates functionality of DirectX, which is primarily actually a C++ based language, it's implemented in C++, but SlimDX allows you to use that on the C sharp level. So what does this all have to do with COM? Well, let's proceed with the slides. The component object model, COM is a binary standard, so it's at, it's at the binary level. So uh, in that regard, when we think about it, it um, kind of go, circumvents the uh, complexities of higher levels uh, because it is literally at the binary standard. This allows for interoperabil interoperability between applications as long as the underlying programming language supports function pointers. So we're going to be delving a little bit more into some depth as to what this all means as we get into the more technical technicality, should I say. But for now, this is a gentle introduction into the topic. COM enables the creation of applications that are built from reusable components. So the component object model. COM also contains parts that work together, enabling the creation of applications that are built from reusable components. I feel like we just read that. Yes, we did. So let's just continue. <laughs> how to implement a COM object. So we're going to look a little bit into the uh, workings of COM at a very introductory level, just to give you guys an idea for those of you who, like some of us, are from a C-sharp background. And so for us, I don't know about you guys, but um, uh, I would see COM every now and then um, in my code base. You know, there's some method or class, uh, or should I say rather, yeah, some object or class that has like a COM member and I'll be like, whoa, what's going on here? Kind of like shift away to the other side. I didn't really want to, it was a little bit intimidating, but I think it's very important for us as um, developers to embrace 
lower level concepts that allow us to do more and go further. So how to implement a COM object? So what we have to know is that a COM object cannot be instantiated in and of itself, like a typical C-sharp class, for example. A COM object exposes its features through an interface. And we're going to be diving into interfaces quite a bit in this course, as this is quite a fundamental component of learning about COM. We need to understand what interfaces are, how to utilize them, and how they are, how they are um, relevant in the realms of COM. So interfaces, which is a co collection of members and functions, so I'll repeat that. A COM object exposes its features through an interface, which is a collection of members and functions. All communications among COM objects are implemented through interfaces, and, are, and all core services offered by components are exposed through its interface. A core can only access interface members, uh, sorry, a core can only access interface member functions. So only member functions um, associated with an interface are the methods that can be called, respectively. So let's proceed with the slides. How to implement a COM object. So to implement a COM object, we use what is known as an IDL file. We're gonna be going into the practicalities of writing an IDL file. Uh, in one of my previous videos on my um, C-sharp walkthroughs YouTube channel, I actually went through the Windows Runtime Component project template type. And I believe in that video, we actually went through how to, um, I walked through how to write an IDL file, a very simple IDL file, which stands for interface definition file. And an IDL file is created when defining an interface. So that's, we deal with IDL files when we want to create an interface. The compiler can then generate header files for use by the application and source files to handle the procedure calls. It's quite an interesting procedure. And so I do encourage you to check out my video on Windows Runtime Components if you are interested in that. But we are going to be diving even more deeper into this uh, in this particular course. So don't worry too much if you haven't seen that video. Inheritance, quite another uh, important thing to get our head, heads around, generally speaking. So inheritance is used sparingly with COM interfaces. COM supports interface inheritance only to reuse a contract associated with a base interface. So this idea of contracts is a concept to do with interfaces. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into that just yet. We're going to dive a little bit more into this subject as we kind of explore the technicalities of how to create uh, COM objects, how to utilize them. But it's good to understand that, yes, uh, COM, COM component object model supports interface inheritance only to reuse a contract associated with a base inheritance. So now it's quite important for us to get our heads around and to understand the I unknown interface. So all COM interfaces inherit from the I unknown interface. The I unknown interface contains fundamental COM operations for polymorphism and instance lifetime management. So I, un oh, oh yes, before I continue, actually, we're going to, uh, I think in my slides, I dive a little bit into what polymorphism is. It's important to get our heads around the basics, the idea, the concept behind polymorphism. And so I think it's the next slide. So before we touch on that, I'm going to just mention that the I unknown interface has three member functions, query interface, add ref, and release. These are three um, fundamental um, member functions that um, the I unknown interface exposes and all COM objects must um, have some form of implementation that um, can call these functionalities. They are fundamental to all COM objects. All COM objects are required to implement the I unknown interface. At runtime, objects of some, so this is the definition of polymorphism. So at runtime, objects of some derived class may be treated as objects of a base class. So I'm gonna say that one more time. At runtime, objects of some derived class may be treated as objects of a base class. Such objects could be method parameters, collections, or arrays. At this point, the declared object type is no longer the same as its runtime type. So imagine we declare some object of, let's say, type A, and we have that in a particular class. And we have some object in, uh, say, so let's actually say class A, and let's say class B, right? And we have some object in class A and some object in class B. Then we decide we want class B to inherit from class A. So class A is, in this very high-level general example, is sort of the base class. 
and class B is the derived class. So that object, by using, if we were to implement polymorphism, po polymorphism in the object in class B, which inherits from class A, we could then say that the, um, I use this term a little lightly, the attributes of um, the object in class A is passed on to, to object B in class, in, the object in class B. It's kind of like, um, to give you an analogy, it's like a parent and a child, right? You know, we don't look, we, we do not resemble 100% our biological mothers and fathers, but we are a representation of them, biologically speaking. We inherit some attributes and properties of our natural born parents, of our natural parents. And this kind of concept holds true with polymorphism. So to go a little bit deeper into the implementation, virtual methods can be defined and implemented by a base class. So virtual methods, you may have seen the virtual keyword if you're a C-sharp developer, uh, somewhere in code somewhere, virtual. And we also have this, uh, derived classes can override them. So we have virtual methods and we have classes that can override virtual methods. This means that the derived class can provide their own definition and implementation of the overridden function. What this all means is that you could call a method within your source code in some base class and then cause a derived classes version. So a class that derives from the base class um, can then um, execute its own version of the, um, of the virtual method instead. Quite an important concept to get our heads around. Again, links will be in the description for why they're reading. This is just a gentle introduction. So let's talk a little bit more about the query interface function. So this is a member function of the ionknown interface. And the query interface can be called to determine at runtime if a COM object supports a particular interface. The query interface member function provides navigation among all of the interfaces that a COM object supports. And we're going to look at the other two member functions of the ionknown, which is add ref and release functions. So, a COM object's lifetime is controlled by its reference count. Quite important uh, for us to understand um, for the lifetime of the COM object. So add ref and release control the count. So very simply put, add ref, the member function add ref increments the count and release decrements the count. When the reference count reaches zero, the release member function may free the instance as no callers are using it. So you may have seen functionality within code whereby um, you have to call some kind of release method. Um, and this kind of refers to the fact that the lifetime of some object has reached its end. And so it, its resources has to be released. We can't keep it um, there. You know, we have to make sure we release those resources um, because we're not using the object. You know, it would be wasteful. And so, my friends, that brings us to the end of this part. Very simple uh, and very gentle introduction into COM, a little insight into COM. Next time, we're going to be looking at the client-server model. We're going to be kind of pacing things up as we go. And I really do thank you for tuning in to this part of the course. Just to give you guys a little bit of housekeeping, my handles are on Fiverr. If you are interested in some of the work that I do, uh, I do have some of my services on Fiverr. Um, you can learn a little bit more about me on my LinkedIn. I'm also planning on putting this course and other future courses on LinkedIn. Uh, if not via LinkedIn Learning, there will be some kind of um, separate unique page I'll set up with videos um, about the courses, um, regarding the courses. I'll put some more information in the description of this video. And I thank you very much for watching. Thanks so much for tuning in and do stay tuned for the next entry of this I think a very fascinating insight into the world of uh, component object model. My name is William Sedijima and I bid you all a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.